Hello, hello. All right. Episode seven. Seven, yeah, yeah. So what happened to your uh your finger there, friend? I chopped it off. <laughs> How'd you do that? I was cleaning dishes and uh I had one of those um sorry. It's one of those fucking uh what do you call them? The sponges on a stick. Sponges on a stick. It's like the stupid um Well, they got like the soap in them and you Yeah, the little button. scrub daddy little stick scrub thing. thing. Okay. And um I was just cleaning the meat cleaver and my finger slipped. Well, not my finger, but my I was holding it like this. The edge. And it slipped and then the knife just went you know, on top of my finger. So like right where your finger connects to so the finger to the top of the fingernail. <laughs> yeah, like the whole there's a chunk of skin just like gone. Did yeah, it stop bleeding? It, it just cut off. Um uh, well, yeah, sorta. I took the we put the liquid skin on it. Mm-hmm. But then this morning, uh when we woke up, I wanted to change the bandage because it, you know, wanted to clean it. Yeah. And the liquid skin had stuck to the bandage, so the scab just ripped off when I tried to take off the bandage. So, yep. Um, part of it was bleeding today, and part of it was not. Ow. But I'm going to have a nice little scar there. Yeah, <laughs> I would imagine. It took, yeah. it took the whole the piece off, right? Yeah. There's and it was such a clean cut that it just would not stop bleeding. Honestly, like a serrated Ooh. edge would make it bleed less, I think. I think it was just bleeding so much because it was so clean. It was just immediate. We're, we're, I mean, that knife... Starting this episode off with some uh That knife cuts gore. through... <laughs> that knife cuts through anything like butter. It's just like... Gross. I mean, I'm glad I didn't lose my finger. But I yeah, mean... Yeah, that, that, um, that would have been rough. Yeah. I mean, it hurts. I was trying to play The Last of Us last night with... Uh, with my oh. brother and my friend Windsor. Yeah. And um, I was just, I looked down and I was just bleeding all over the controller. Oh. So I was like, oh, great. So I had to change the bandage in then. Oh, no. Yeah. It's good now. My bandage is white. There you it go. It was red yesterday. All Oof. four times I changed it. And then I went to bed last night with it really tight. Yeah. And then, so it's better today. That's good. But, um. That sucks. But Yo, whenever, psh. whenever you, uh, well, I'm, I know at least whenever I cut my finger, I always processed every single thing that led me to cutting my finger and how I could have done it differently. And I'm just like pissed off at myself because I'm like, no, that was stupid. Why really, did I do that? No, it's really stupid because as I was, as I was cleaning it, I'm like, man, I hope I don't cut myself. <laughs> Like, as I was doing it, I was like, man, if I just slipped and uh, this knife got me, ooh, that would be a bad guy. I was literally thinking it as yeah. it happened. I was like, no! Oh, so I was I was so mad. I was very, I was more mad than anything because yeah. I was like, are you, are you kidding me? Oof. I'm seriously bleeding right now like a stuffed pig. Yeah. Yep. And, and it was like, dude, it was like, it. I've never seen blood rush out of a wound faster. Yeah. Because I cut it, and well, it I was see. immediately, my entire hand was just red. Yeah. It w- it just came, whoa, like yeah. right down, and I was like, holy shit. You would have thought I cut my finger off. Like, it looked pretty gross. Yeah. yeah. I did that. Um, luckily, it was a serrated knife. Still sucked, but it went all the way. D- I'm convinced it went all the way down to my bone. Oh, yeah. I remember you did that when you were trying to cut a bagel. No, right? I was trying. No, there was the frozen hamburger. Oh, that's what it and was. And for whatever reason, I, I see this is like where I, I feel stupid. I like decided to use the sharpest knife I could find and like try to like. Yeah, you could have done that with a butter knife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my thumb was on the other side of it, and some for some reason I decided to go like this, and it just went right through yeah. and right through my finger, and it was instant blood well, everywhere. From- I was like. Oh, From now shit. on, I've decided I'm like, fuck it. I'm just gonna put the knives, um, 
I'm just going to put the knives aside and then I'm not going to touch them unless I use one of those. The gloves. Gloves. Yeah. Because I can't be trusted, obviously. And my mom got me those knives for Christmas. So. Yeah. And you just keep the edge away, facing away. So it was facing away from me. That's what's so stupid about it. It was facing downward, and I was doing it on the side. But like when I sl- when it slipped off the knife, my finger went down, and then you know you react, you move quickly. Uh, so that's how it happened. It yeah. was it was like so if the the blade was like this, yeah, and I'm cleaning the side of the blade, yeah, and then it just went downward, but my other hand like went. jerked, so it just whoa, and I was like oh, yeah, it was pretty gross. It's still disgusting. It looks. Yeah, dude, you're really lucky that you didn't jump. I know. Thumb off. It looks. Wow, it okay. looks like ground hamburger. It, it's absolutely disgusting. Ew. I'll show you. I'll show the world. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Who I want to see the. <laughs> I'll show you guys when it when uh, it stops bleeding. Yeah. But I'll I'll put some pictures up on the gram. <laughs> oh, Please don't. I'll show you guys. Please don't. Oh. Just put it in a story. People are gonna be like, be like swipe, be like swipe, uh, click, click at the ne- to the next picture if you want to, if you want to see my nasty finger. God, yeah. <laughs> Members only. Austin's uh, oh, disgusting thumb. Uh, yeah, that that's it's pretty gross. That's rough, man. Yeah. Oh gosh. But in other news, um, oh, I finally got to. You watched. Uh, Oh my god! Our fans are probably so fucking sick and tired of hearing about this movie. Yeah, um, you saw it though. Uh, yeah, I saw. Not it. a fan. I saw Star Wars. <laughs> Not a fan. <laughs> yeah, um, like I said before, I mean, I I will like try and give a little bit of a story of how it happened. I'm hanging out with my buddy Nico, and he's like, "You gotta watch it." We went out to eat. Yeah. And he was like, you got to watch it. And I was like, why? He's like, because it's like, t- Nico said it's like laughably bad. And I was like, uh-oh. And he's like, because, you know, I'm thinking Nico's just being hard on it. I'm thinking he's just being hard on it. Which, and, and keep I in said mind, to him, he well, is on most. I, well, yeah, he, he's brutally honest. So, which is admirable. I like that. Yes. Um, And, you know, I, so I'm a big believer in, you know, if you ain't got nothing nice to say about something, then don't say it at all. But. That doesn't mean you can't talk about things you don't like. Right. And I do, we do a fair amount of that. I try not to do it as much because, you know, I don't want to shit on something that somebody's like, oh, it's like my favorite thing ever. And you shit on it. But, like, you know, whatever. People do it to me. Yeah. Um, but I, I was going in and I told him, I said, all right, listen, I'm going to go in watching this movie knowing that there has to be a better version because Zack Snyder, you know, we talked deep about this. I think it's really yeah. stupid that there's a director's cut before. It's definitely, we went over the reasons in our other episode there about yeah. it definitely being for money and, and all this stuff so they can yeah. double, triple, quadruple dip or whatever, yeah. which is whatever. I don't know that if, whether that's not the greatest thing, in my opinion, as far as the quality of the art, because we did say this is like the first time he's stepping out of the gates with this new idea. Mm-hmm. You know, they probably should have went with their best foot forward. And I understand that this is probably the only way he could have his cut. I get all that. Yeah. Having said that, I told him I will judge this movie based on this being a, its own thing. Mm -hmm. So if a child of fire director's cut is like the shit, then I'll be like, yeah, dude, I don't know what the hell they were doing. Yeah. Cause that's the shit. Um, uh, cool ideas. Like I really liked, I'll start with the things I liked. I really liked the whole concept of it. The whole 20 minutes at the beginning, even though it was just a bug's life. You know, spoilers, slightly. I'm not going to go into deep spoilers. I'm just going to, like, light spoilers. The plot was cool, Mm -hmm. Uh, even though it was just literally a New Hope Star Wars mixed with a bug's life. Mm. That's all it was. And I get that every and like we said when watching it, every idea has already been done. So like I get it, yeah. you know, whatever. It's kind of a love letter. Yeah, it's, I get it. In, like, in a way, in the whole started, bar scene, I was just like, wow, bro, this is like what they go and see. Dude, Jabba it the literally, Hutt. <laughs> it, it literally is just a new hope because yeah. you know it's farmers on this planet, yeah. and there's a tyrant yeah. um, leader, yeah. you know, who want to take out the space the Nazis rebels. <laughs> 
Space Nazis. The Space Nazis. Yeah, somebody said it. I think Nico told me. He was like, I can't remember who said it, but somebody was like, Star Wars has space Nazis, but Rebel Moon has Nazis in space. And yeah. I'm like, that makes perfect yeah. sense. Yeah. But here's the thing. Um, it does teeter on like straight up plagiarism. <laughs> like it's like a it's like straight up carbon copy of they literally go to a bar, like I said, light spoiler. They go to a bar, they find a guy who has a ship to take them to the planets they need to go to. That's yeah. literally Han Solo. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> okay, that's like a little on yeah. the but either way, th- there are stuff I liked. I really liked, you know, the 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 cool creatures. That you one, know, that, that the one little, in the bar. Little, that one little bug that had the dead guy. Yeah, yeah. That thing creeped me the, out, the, man. The, the, the creatures were cool. The planets were, I don't know, CGI. They were cool, I guess. Mm. But, like, you know, the overall concept of the movie was neat. I thought it was neat. And especially the first 20 minutes, I was very invested. Multiple times I looked over at Nico and I was like, what are you talking about? This is pretty freaking cool. Yeah. But then, then it goes... Down Gets a little south. Um, I, like I said, just based on what I saw in this specific version, that ain't it. Yeah. I, I don't know any characters' names aside from Korra. Yeah. That's the only character's name I know. I don't care about them. The movie doesn't care about them. They do nothing. Once yeah. they recruit them, they stand in the background and do, not even exaggerating, absolutely nothing. Yeah. They introduce cool creatures and characters and concepts that do nothing for yeah. the story. It's just a bunch of things that look and sound cool that yeah. mean nothing. Yeah. So that was my biggest complaint when I came yeah. to you. I was like, there's not character development. No, <laughs> there is none. There's like no characters. Like they just like, don't do nothing. And then like by the end of it, it's kind of like it's hinted at like there's like some like love interest between the farmer and Cora, but yeah, like, they mention it, but it's like, yeah, it's like vague, very vague, right? And so I was kind of like, there is, yeah, the <laughs> uh, PG 13 because Zack Snyder said the other version he sees it as a whole nother universe, which you know, whatever you think of that is whatever you think of that. I yeah. think it's dumb. They should have just put out that version and only that version because yeah. that's the true representation of Rebel Moon because yeah. it is Zack Snyder's film. Yeah. So I don't know why they did this. I mean, we went over reasons, but like it's a dumb reason. Mm. So whatever the reasoning, I don't like it and I don't buy it. And I didn't like that movie. I yeah. thought it had cool ideas, but the version they gave us of Rebel Moon part one, I thought it was very bad. I didn't yeah. like it at all. I... It wasn't a very good movie. Yeah. Cool ideas. Uh, definitely not for me. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, they give me the other version and we all watch it and it's fucking awesome. I hope it's awesome. I have high hopes. Me too. And I have a str- like I have a I have a huge feeling it's going to be awesome. I have yeah. a feeling I'm going to watch it and be like, yo, what the hell? Why didn't they just put this out? And it's yeah. going to just piss me off even more. Yeah. But I mean, at least we'll have that version. I don't know yeah. what what way to really, and I don't want to spend too much time on Rebel Moon because we've talked about it for like four episodes now. Yeah, it's like this big new movie. Yeah, but um, yeah, Rebel Moon, uh, director the the PG thirteen Netflix version. Nope, yeah. I'm good. Yeah. I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it at all. Fair. Uh, but hopefully, I, I found it enjoyable. But I've only watched it one other time mm-hmm. and that's all I need. yeah that's it uh-huh and um any more than that it's just kind of there's a really funny part yeah you know? i don't think it was intended to be funny and i'm not like poking fun at the movie or the oh, character here oh, yeah. but um like i said i think this is a problem with the editing and the version that we got but yeah. there's just like a random moment i'm not going to say what happens but a character who I also don't know the name of. Yeah. Um, Who is really supposed to be important in yeah, the whole story. Something happens, and then another character like just screams into the camera, and it's really funny. It's like right there. It was, it's just like the weirdest yeah. cut ever, but yeah. like, 
Uh, I don't know. I mean, I got a lot of because you know, me and Nico talked about it at the end, and we were both saying the same thing. We were like, "Yeah, hopefully the other version is much better because this yeah. version's just a fucking mess." But yeah. you know, we'll see. We'll yeah. see. But anyway, like I said, I don't want to spend too much time on Rebel. Yeah, no, but, I don't. Need you know, to. neat neat ideas. We'll see. We'll see the director's cut. You you when you watch it, you can like see what it could be. Oh, yeah, that's how I. Well, felt. that's the problem. And that's um, a big problem. They shouldn't be putting that out. Yeah. You know? But also, I f- so I finished The Offer last night. Oh, yeah. Which is the TV show about the making of The Godfather. And they um, were really good, by the way. Highly recommend it. But um, they... I found out why they make theatrical cuts. I had no idea. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of reasons. It's The biggest reason is the amount of times that they could play it in a theater... In one day. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, I knew that one. Because that's the whole reason when, they chopped up Batman versus Superman. Yeah. Even after they gave it like a standing ovation, they were like, mm, yeah. let's just chop it down. It's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> but you took out the wrong stuff. Yeah. So that's, yeah. What, that's what happened. Well, at least with The Godfather. What saved it is so how they do movies nowadays, which I didn't notice either. That was like the first movie that they booked it in hundreds of theaters across the country yeah. before it was like select theaters across the country and mm. you'd have to go there um and so they they took a big chance on that and um so now that's kind of like it paved the way how movies are released now but um because they they wanted to again to chop up that fucking movie and yeah. cut all the important stuff out of it and make it into a two and a half hour not even two and a half hour when it's supposed to be what three three hours and three minutes or something like that, and um, they ended up uh, doing it how movies are released nowadays, and um, it paid off big time. But in the in the moment, they were uh, the the studio was just like, nope, got to cut thirty minutes out of it. That's really dumb because we need our five showings a day. Because mm. with a three hour, you only get about three, if even. And uh, it, it, that movie or that show just like made me so angry anytime there was like executive people in the room just yeah barking at the poor producers and the directors who were just like, no. And the writer just like, no, you don't understand. Like this is this is this is important. Yeah. And they're like, no, it's not. <laughs> and it's like, no, it is. <laughs> yeah, it's just whatever. I'm I'm just I'm so to the point where I'm just like, I don't even give a shit anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even care. You you give me a good movie and uh I'll you know, I'll support it and watch it and yeah. I'll love it. You yeah. know, just make good movies. Stop stop yeah. stop thinking about it like this weird I mean, it's all just greed and all that stuff, and just yeah. like every other business. But I mean, I'm just get to the point where I'm just like, I don't give a shit. I'm just gonna let the good movies come to me. Yeah, you know, I'm not gonna go seeking the next big movie blockbuster. Yeah, bullshit. Like, I'm just so done. Yeah. That's why I'm just I'm looking at deep cuts, dude. I'm like going on Reddit deep and being yeah. like, tell me good movies, you know? Like, yeah. and I'm watching these good movies, you know, these, you know, more obscure films that are. You know that that I don't I don't care about the reviews. I don't care about what people say. I just watch the movie, just take it in because I don't care. It's not like this big thing. No yeah. one's talking about it. I don't have to worry about it getting spoiled. No, yeah. just big movies and just ugh, it's so obnoxious. It's exhausting at this point. It's yeah. so exhausting. I just can't wait for all these companies to just take a break. No. That's what they need to do. They just need to chill out. They need to go back to being like, all right. Time to do basic stuff here. Look, can we just hire someone to make a cool drama? Well, like, yeah, why? Why do we gotta? You need someone with balls. You know, they need to take a risk. Yeah, there's and, no risk taking. And no offense, you know, don't be, you know, don't be the director who goes and compromises a chopped up version of your movie before your actual movie comes out. Yeah, that ain't good. That not, that's not the way to do it. That's yeah. not the way. Yeah. You know, because, yeah, you know what the movie is. You've seen the good one. We haven't. Yeah. And we're the part that matters here. We're the supporting, we're the consumers. Right. So 
make the you know you got to be more stern about the deals you make and you, you can't let these studios push you over man yeah. like it's so stupid mm-hmm. i don't know i just wish we could uh you know i wish we before we move on from these chapters of these films i think what would be smart and they said this would happen you know when the snyder cut was coming out they were like oh it's setting a dangerous precedent and I'm like, no, actually, I like that precedent. I think we should start going back and righting all the wrongs. Yeah. That's what we should. We should be making amends. These companies should be making amends with all these filmmakers yeah. going back. And you have more money than dirt, dude. Like, yeah. just go and find the directors and go, hey, you know, that's what the Snyder Cut movement should have done. You know, it should have yeah. inspired more things like this. That's why we should have the air cut. Yeah. That should have been released already. We yeah. should be going back and finding these directors and saying, hey, you weren't happy with this thing. You got this other cut. Let's put some money. It's not a lot of money. Let's just put some money into it. Get that version out. Yeah. Let's start writing these wrongs, you know? Mm-hmm. That's what we should be doing. Yeah. Instead I of mean, wasting all the money rebooting, rebooting yeah, everything yeah. and remaking everything. Mm-hmm. Like, why don't we write the wrongs before we move forward? Right. You know, you got the money. Yeah. That's, and that's how you're going to keep the good graces of your supporting fan base mm-hmm. on your good side. Right. By just shunning them and ignoring them and moving forward, you're alienating fan bases, you're alienating filmmakers and directors yeah. and producers, and you're turning people off and you're making people just like with sour taste in their mouth. Yeah. And it's going to burn bridges and create enemies. Yeah. They should be righting the wrongs that they have done in the past. The Snyder Cut should have been for the our generation because that's not the first, you know, they didn't invent the wheel with that. Yeah. You know, there's the Richard Donner cut of Superman. There are director's cuts of Blade Runner. There are director's cuts. They've been a thing for the longest time. Actually, yeah. the the guy who um, directed The Car is the reason we have director's cuts, which yeah. is my dad's favorite movie. And, you know, the Directors Guild of America, you know, that's like a, that should be, I don't know. I know I'm preaching the choir. We just need to, if the director and the creators of these things are not happy with what's being made, you failed at your job yeah. by being the distributor of that product. It's like, you know, it's like Matt said on the podcast, he was like, you know, if the artist isn't happy, then I haven't done my job. Yeah. And that's what you're doing. You're creating that tenfold right. and you're ruining the, your reputation in the process more than right. anything. That's why these companies are going bankrupt. That's why yeah. nobody's watching Disney Plus. That's why nobody's supporting Warner Brothers Discovery. Yeah. That's why they're chomping at the bit to make deals with everybody so they can rob Peter to pay Paul and all this stuff. It's just Yeah. It's a dying business and they are the ones who did it to themselves. They shot themselves in the foot and it's not ever going to get better until they start realizing that they are in the wrong and they need yeah. to right those wrongs. They need to correct they need to course correct without yeah. sacrificing quality of content and relationships with the people creating it yeah and it's gonna it's probably gonna take someone from the inside to, or a newcomer that comes in and i don't know what it's gonna do but and and uh take that step because as of as of right now it seems like everyone's selling everyone's selling their company <laughs> just cashing out that's and, all they uh, want. Yeah. They'd rather cash out than fix it for real, man. Yeah. They're, you know, it's, it's, you know, they're trying to get their bonuses and mm-hmm. it's just. Yeah. It's crazy. It's, I know. The, the, the guys in, uh, in, in power in these companies are, um, they're just businessmen. Yeah. Not necessarily f- like film anything. They're just. Uh, that's, that's part of the problem. You know, yeah, when it yeah. started, it wasn't really like that. You know, you had investors who actually believed in what the product was, but now it's just, it's gone yeah. so far down the pipe that it's just, yeah. you know, they're just a shell of what they used to be. Yeah. And they don't even, they don't even have a purpose there yeah. other than their wallets being open. Yeah. But they're so protective of their money that they can't let somebody create without their pride getting in the way. So they have to get involved and all these things happen and yeah. look at the graph. Yeah. You know, fuck your graph. Yeah. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's just, yeah, it's, it's a mess dude. Cause we don't have movies like the iron giant anymore. Yeah. We don't have video games like the last of us anymore. Mm-hmm. We don't have, 
yeah, this I w- quality of content anymore. I, I, I was um, thinking about that last night. It's like, what was like the last big like hit like that that is going to like live generations? Like movies, like um, the last big hit, like yeah, like as, like I can't think in the last like ten. Hey, Dark years. Side's gone. Oh, well, where's Dark Side? He's in my room. Oh no. I, but I can't think of like a movie, and maybe I'm just uh, not even haven't seen it. But um, I can't think of like a movie that was like a big, like something that would live, like um. You mean know, movies like The Breakfast Club or something like that? Oh, just, just I like live generations. Yeah, I mean, I, I would you know? say the last ones that we really had that were like generation defining would be like the Marvel movies. Marvel, movies. you know, like yeah. the 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 top ones, you know. And I know there's quality fluctuation in that, you yeah. know, and especially in my opinion, I think a lot of it's not gone so well, you yeah. know. And I know a lot of people agree. Um, as far as after yeah. Avengers Endgame, but that stuff will live on. Yeah. At least, I don't know, maybe they'll ruin the reputation of that stuff so bad with the stuff they're doing now that that stuff's never going to live. You know what I'm saying? So who yeah. knows? But there's been a lot of generational defining quality movies, you know? I mean, The Dark Knight, I think, you know, that's like three movies. Yeah. As far as quality content, I would say, like, The Dark Knight, that movie in itself, you know. That was, what, 2008? 2008. I think that movie's just yeah. unstoppable. I mean, yeah. no matter what, that movie was the movie that spawned all of this stuff. Yeah. Because that movie is the bar. That is the one thing. Everything in the entire world gets compared to The Dark Knight. That's fair. Everything. Everything. They're like, oh, is it like Dark Knight good? Like, yeah. it's the best comic book movie ever. But that's what's so crazy about that movie. It's not just a comic book movie. This has been said so many times. And I know it probably loses its meaning because of how many times it's said. But it's not just a good comic book movie. It's a great film. Yeah. It is just a great film. Yeah. Because it was original. Yeah. You know, there really isn't another movie like The Dark Knight. That yeah. movie is so unique. Mm-hmm. And um, that's like the last one I can really say that yeah. will stand the because I, I think about a Marvel movie, and I know I sound biased, but like you know I do love Marvel, I love X Men, I love, mm-hmm. but when I think of those movies, I see The Dark Knight playing out in my head. Yeah, it's so iconic. I mm-hmm. feel the movie in my body. I'm yeah. just like, yeah, that scene, the tone of it, it felt good, it looked yeah. good, it sounded good, it. The acting was so good. I remember the lines. I remember the inflections and how they said no. things. It's like, I can't do that with Marvel movies. I found out something cool about The Dark Knight. Um, his uh, motorbike, what do they call it? The Bat Pod. Bat Pod. Yeah, so the sound of that was actually the first um, Tesla motor ever made. Um, oh, that's weird. It's uh, the Tesla Royster, I think. And... Um, when you accelerate it, it makes the sound of the, the Batmobile. That's interesting. I thought that was cool. That's was, pretty strange. Mm-hmm. Didn't know that. I didn't either. So that's what they used when they were. My dad called that, for. by the way, the the, the Bat Pod. Yeah. Was so they put out the pictures of it originally? Mm-hmm. And my dad was looking at it and he was like, "Those tires, they look mm-hmm. like the tires on the front of the tumbler." And I was mm-hmm. like, "Huh." And then he was in like, you know, back when forums were a thing, mm-hmm. you know. They still kind of are with Reddit, but like back mm. when there was like nerd forms, yeah. uh, he was on there and he kept saying to everybody, he was like, look at this picture. Like, it looks like this is going to come out of the Tumblr. And everybody on there was like, no, no, it's not. It ain't going to come out of there. Yada, yada. <laughs> that's stupid. That's dumb. And then in the movie that happened, and my dad was like, I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty and sick. It, it wasn't dumb, I don't think. No, that's it. a really cool idea, actually. I loved it's it. It's like a, oh shit moment, time to bounce. Yeah. I like how it self-destructs itself. Yeah. Too. Yeah, get rid of the there. evidence. That thing is real. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. A real, that's a real thing. That's cool. I, they built every Batmobile. Yeah. There isn't a single Batman movie where they didn't build it. Yeah, it's like all those cars are real. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. I would love to go see that warehouse. Mm-hmm. They have it in uh, 
their Warner Brothers museum or whatever. Yeah. And they got all the Batmobiles. They got all the, every single prop in any movie that Warner Brothers has been a part of. They're all just stored in the warehouse. Is it the back lot? Is that what they call it? Uh, maybe. I saw a, a, like a documentary on it, and it was super cool. They're, they literally have everything you could ever imagine. And uh, uh, that would be cool to, to visit. Yeah. I think... I think that one's really good, though. The Dark Knight, that one stands out to me. And I know most people, that one, st- that, that one stands out. Um, but, I mean, the, also Oppenheimer. Isn't it crazy? Oppenheimer did really well. I still haven't seen it. But Oppenheimer did really well. I don't know if that's going to like really yeah. define a generation or anything. But everybody seemed to really like that one. So, something cool about Oppenheimer is I don't think it's coming out on streaming, as far as I know. It is. Is it already? Up yeah, there? it is. It already is. Okay. Yeah, it took a while. Yeah, it did. Because it's, I'm pretty sure it's on DVD already. Um, but it went in theaters for many, 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 many months. Um, so that was refreshing. Kind of doing it the old, yeah, old fashioned way for a while. Because like during COVID and shit, everyone just yeah streaming, 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 streaming. Dude, I would love to go to a movie theater, but nothing has piqued my interest to make me want to go. That yeah, that's 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 the problem. That's kind of like what I'm saying. It's yeah. like, when's the last time that like the last time I jumped at the bit to go see a movie in the movie theater was Spider Man No Way Home because I yeah. wanted to see Tobey right. Maguire and yeah. Andrew Garfield. Yeah, but like other than that, I mean that movie's pretty shallow. I mean like there's yeah. really not much going on. It's just yeah. a it's just a silly Marvel movie. But that part was cool to see them. Yeah. That was the only reason because it was like a culmination of um, all these characters, and that was yeah. really sick to see. You know, and then yeah. watching the Flash try to do that was really embarrassing for them. Yeah. And, and it's just like there's so many there's so many great movies, but I have not wanted to go to the movie theater. Yeah. You know, I Oppenheimer didn't make me want to go. You know, yeah. I, I did. That, that was the last time I I went and saw it. Which well, no, you went awesome. and saw Rebel Moon. I did see. Yeah, Rogue you, Moon. you traveled a long distance to see that Went film. To, yeah. <laughs> oh, Oppenheimer was much better. I cannot, I that. dude. I and then I I enjoyed it the second time around. I watched I'm, it again. You know, I'm happy that a lot of people want to support Snyder and stuff, but I'm really glad I didn't go to New York City to watch that. Yeah. <laughs> New York City was bad. If they do a fucking uh, debut of the director's cut, I'll go. That sounds like something I I'd don't. Do. I don't think they'll be doing that, mm. unfortunately. I think they're uh, sad. I think they're gonna do. They'll probably do part two like that again. Mm-hmm. I would imagine. The skull give up. Maybe I. Don't, I actually don't know. I don't know. I would imagine, mm-hmm. but I would love. You know, there's so many. Now that we're talking about movies and like cool, um, good movies versus like you know like generational and defining things. I believe that there are movies that could be made to define a generation mm. that they have tried to do and just maybe approached it not the right way. Like when I was growing up, uh, Slender was like a huge thing. Mm. Everyone loved Slender. It was like this cool thing that like people my age thought it was really fun. You know, you download this really cool game and you play this game. And that was just generational defining. That's like what sparked a lot of the reactions and people playing the game and yeah. being scared. And we used to always watch that stuff. That like was a, a defining moment for like gaming. And yeah. they could it. They could make that into such an excellent film too. Yeah. And they just dropped the ball so yeah. hard. I don't know if you watched the Slenderman movie, but like it's bad. It's like. I think I was excited to see it, and then you I told me I was so excited, was, too. And You saw it at, like, the drive-ins or something, right? Uh, no, I actually watched that one on DVD. Mm. Um, I remember you telling me that it was just It's just so it. stupid, because, like, they, it just, and it's just a problem, you know? It's just, like, the, the ongoing problem. They just turned it into the ring. Yeah. And it's just not, that's not at all. Like, they missed the point. The Ring, yeah, The Ring was actually a pretty good one. Yeah, those are awesome, like, you know, obviously the Japanese versions are yeah, way, way better. <laughs> but, uh, and I know that because I've been watching them all, yeah. and they're freaking awesome. Yeah. Um, dude, and J-Horror is, like, unmatched. Mm. J-Horror is 
really disturbing. <laughs> but I lo- also like, you know, Korean horror, anything overseas horror. I, you yeah. know, I said it so many times. I'm beating a dead horse at this point, but uh, foreign horror movies is the way to go. That's that's where you get the good stuff. Yeah. But um, it's just so sad because there's so many cool ideas that yeah. they just they try to do, but they 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 hearts not in the right place, or like the creators' hearts are not in the right place, or maybe they coming at it in the wrong for the wrong reasons, like they're doing it. I don't know if it's just a money grab or something like an IP grab or I don't know what it is, but they just, yeah. they always try these things and they're just shit. Yeah. Cause like, there's no reason a slender man movie should have failed. There's no reason like this right. unacceptable that that movie failed. Yeah. It's such a sick character with an awesome spooky idea that kids like Yeah, that you, you know, well, I wonder if that, um, Remember the that uh, that murder that happened? Oh well, it wasn't a murder; it was an attempted murder. Oh right, she yeah. got away. Yeah. yeah, I watched the documentary. No, yeah. I do not think Her that had anything to do with the the success. Well, not the success, but like the the movie is just garbage. The, the, it's literally garbage. No, I know, but like the the wanting to pick that up, like first, oh, the wanting to do it, the wanting to like make another one. I don't believe. With the thought in the back of your head that, oh, this character influenced at least two little girls to... I mean, I don't know. ...murder their friend, or at least try to. It was a very popular character even before that, so... Interesting. Like, it's a huge, like, creepypasta thing. Oh, yeah. I remember, speaking of creepypasta, that one and, uh... What was it, Jack? Is it Jack the Ripper? Jack the Ripper's not creepypasta. Jack the Ripper is like an old story from colonial England. True story. Actually. He has his like eyelids cut off or something. I don't know about the eyelids cut off. That's not Jack the Ripper. No. No. I'm thinking of something else. Yeah, I used to mm-hmm. I used to stay up and watch all those creepy pastas on, on YouTube and shit. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, like I, freak me out. <laughs> I had a friend in middle school and high school that did too. Yeah. But going real quick, going back to the Dark Knight, it just occurred to me. <laughs> Um, the nerd energy in this room is it, always strong. Hey, well, you know, this is our podcast. Ah, uh, you know, welcome to it. Um, but no, the can you? It's crazy that movie is going to be twenty years old in four years. Yep, <laughs> it's the movie everybody wanted to copy too. It's crazy. Everyone yeah. wanted to copy that movie. Still do. They still want to copy that movie. They're still trying to replicate that magic. Uh, but it, like, it only comes if once. You in shouldn't want to do it again. The, it's been done. Just do yeah. something else. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. That's something you can admire Marvel for. Yeah, they at least tried something else. Yeah. You know, DC was over here doing their own thing, and then Marvel was like, "We'll do this." Yeah, they were like, "All right." We'll just get like a whole bunch of ideas and put them in a mixing pot and build a world out of it. Yeah. You know, DC was over here just doing their like more self contained thing, as they should. And you know, better at just making films, not superhero movies, but films. Yeah. Like the superhero thing is part of it, obviously, because that is the product. But the movie itself needs to, the movie itself needs to be able to stand on its own feet without being dependent on. It's right. Uh, flashiness, you know. Yeah. It's, it's it's just so. Well, like Joker. My dad texted me the other day. And he was like, "I forgot how like disturbing that movie is." Joker's incredible. Yeah, yeah, and and because it doesn't really necessarily focus on the Joker, it's yeah. just it's the also, downfall of this guy. Yeah, who's. And that that, just, that takes huge inspiration from like Taxi Driver and stuff. So that movie is yeah. not exactly reinventing a wheel no. either. Yeah. But it's still like something new for our generation. We don't, you know, I don't know Taxi Driver. Yeah. And it was from like our parents' yeah. generation when we they were kids. That was De Niro. Robert De Niro, yeah. which was in the movie, obviously. So, yeah. um, but like that was like an okay thing because it wasn't something that this generation is trying to do all the time. Yeah. It was like. Todd Phillips went, I'm going to like make my own taxi driver movie. Yeah. But it was new to us all because we don't know that movie. Yeah. You know, that's not like something that we all are familiar with. Right. And he didn't take Joker and try to do The Dark Knight with it. Yeah. 
like they did with Venom. Yeah. You know, they're all trying yeah. to do the Dark Knight origin movie that yeah. lands with, I mean, well, Batman Begins origin movie that lands so perfectly and then, oh, God. Yeah. It's 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 sad, dude. And then, yeah. you know, that's what happened with fucking Wonder Woman, dude. They're just like, oh, Batman Begins. Here yep. we go. And yeah. then we'll get to the second one and we'll bring in the bad guy. And it'll, you know, it's just like, <laughs> yeah. it's sad, dude. It's really sad. They're all trying to be Christopher Nolan. And it's like, <sighs> Cut, and just cut it and out. that that really is just the executives going. All right, let's do it again. Yeah, and they wanted to do it with Man of Steel, so they went to Chris Nolan and they were like, "Hey, we want you to do Superman." And he yeah. was like, "I don't want to do Superman. I'll write it, <laughs> and yeah. I'll find a director." Yeah, and then you know we got Man of Steel. Yeah, and that I would say you know out of all the films that are trying to copy Batman, Batman Begins it does a pretty good job, and it does it like in its own way where it's not. Just a straight up rip off because it has its own identity, its own heart. Yeah. Because the writing was so well done and put together yeah. and all that stuff. And obviously, you know, Zach's identity with his thing. But it's just so, it's just so annoying. I just don't want to. I, I would love to be a fly on the wall watching Christopher Nolan write. He's so reserved in like interviews and stuff. It's hard to like see where yeah. his brain is. Mm-hmm. And I would just love to like. <clears throat> see his process and how he brainstorms yeah and and figures out all these like and just world builds this entire thing that is just like it feels like every time he writes something it's always it's never like it never feels like it's him rewriting the same thing it always feels fresh or if he's like for example, like Oppenheimer and stuff. It's like paying respects to the actual events. Yeah. But in like a very well, not over dramatic, but dramatic, yeah, entertaining way that yeah, I mean that just draws you in. Yeah, for I, I think some I'm reason. I've always been super, you know, into the the films that I can relate to. And I guess that's Maybe the disconnect with me for a lot of Christopher Nolan stuff. The mm. only reason I like, the only reason I know who Christopher Nolan is, is because of his Batman stuff. Yeah, and I don't, you know, I'm not really into his other stuff. Yeah. I've seen it, you know, I'm not really into. I didn't really care for Memento. I didn't really care for like, um, the you same way Interstellar. Yeah, I didn't really like it. Really, like no, it? no, no, no. I'm not really wow. into Christopher Nolan. I like yeah. Christopher Nolan doing. Batman, you know, much like I like Zack Snyder doing DC in general because Watchmen's excellent. Yeah. You know, I just, there's nothing for me to like relate to. And Nico always like laughs at me. He's like, oh, because it doesn't have capes. I'm like, no, I just like (laughs) DC specifically. There's capes at Marvel and I don't really, but it's funny because I, I know a Christopher Nolan movie when I see it and I did not like, I'm not saying I didn't think they were good movies. I thought they were great movies, but when I was done with it, I went, cool and as i moved on i didn't think about it afterwards i was like what a cool movie interstellar was fantastic yeah um memento was okay i like that you know this is like a first movie so it's definitely you know you could tell first movie vibes but like um still great stuff but here's the thing when i follow a director that like i can relate to um like um like Zack snyder when i see movies like dawn of the dead I have always loved Dawn of the Dead because, you know, if the director has same same interests as me, I'm going to probably flock to them, you know? Yeah. And I think that's the disconnect between um, a filmmaker like Christopher Nolan and like a – because you, you ever hear like the actors talk about Zack Snyder. They're like, he's like very like – Yeah. He has a very his... childlike yeah. interest for it. And I think that's why – it works so well for me to to watch his stuff, and that's why when I watched Rob Moon, it was like a little, it was a little like sad because I was like, oh man, yeah. this came from my favorite director, and that's yeah. why I'm so sad about it, you know. And it just kind of annoyed me, but it just shows when you when you think about it, the writers are, are what's most important yeah. in a film. And Christopher Nolan, back to what you're saying, he is just great at writing. He yeah. just has a thing about his style that even if you're not into the ideas and the and the stuff that he's into yeah. he makes you into it for the duration of the film. Yeah. And I think that is 
that is what makes him so great. Yeah. And um, that's what I think most people admire about him, even if they're not thinking about it. That is yeah. why everyone loves him. Because yeah. even if he's talking about some shit, like, do we really care about Oppenheimer? No, not really. But you watch the movie and you're like, wow, this dude makes me really care about Oppenheimer. <laughs> like, yeah. he just has a way. And, and you almost, you feel, by the end of it, you feel like almost guilty yourself. Well, I didn't see Oppenheimer, so don't spoil it. But, yeah, I won't. But but I think it, you feel odd after, and you're like, yeah, you feel dirty, almost. Mm-hmm. Like you're part of the problem, right? But but the full circle of what we're saying when you said you know the the memorable d- generation yeah. defining things, they have to come from filmmakers who can make you give a shit yeah. about what they're telling you. They have to be storytellers that make you care yeah. about the story, even if it's something you're not into. Like, I don't, you know, we don't think about any of those things. They're, they're, the stories are about on a day-to-day basis. You know, like I think about DC stuff. Mm-hmm. But it just shows you, you know, I love when Zack Snyder's talk about DC. Yeah. But I don't, you know, and, and zombies, because I like zombies. I like DC comics. Mm-hmm. But I don't like Ralph Moon. Yeah. You know, and I didn't like, I don't like the, the Owl movie. You know, I don't like. I actually haven't seen that one yet. It's all right. You know, it's just a little it's cute like little movie. I didn't yeah. like Soccer Punch. You know, like, yeah. if it's not something I'm into, I just noticed, you know, well, maybe it's just not for me, you know? But but Christopher Nolan's so fucking good that he can take something you're not even into and make you care about it. Yeah. And I think that is why The Dark Knight's so good. Because even yeah. if you're not into Batman, you like The Dark Knight. Yeah. Even if you don't give a shit about, if you've never read a Batman comic and you watch The Dark Knight, you're like, this movie well, kicks ass. Well, that's, that's what I the said. Difference. That's what I said about um, Joker to Amaya because she, I was like, you need to see this movie. It's so yeah, good. and he did that with Joker. Yeah, even if you've never read a fucking Joker comic, you're like, I you, love this movie. You'll, it's you'll, just and she she loved it because it it was yeah because she's like into like the whole psychotic. Like yeah, the, type what do thing. they call them? Yeah, the, the unreliable narrator or whatever. There's so many words to describe yeah. it. Yeah, the character study movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah those yeah. movies are all always yeah. usually pretty cool. Yeah, so she's into like that kind of stuff, and I was like, you would love this movie. She's like, I don't know anything about Joker. And I was like, you don't need to, and that's what's cool about it. Is mm-hmm. like you, yeah, you because it's, it's not really like the Joker Mm -hmm. as you're thinking of the Joker. It's Mm -hmm. literally just the downfall of this character. And um, that's why that's why those movies failed because they're not made for people who aren't into the comics. They're not made for people who aren't into the characters. Well, failed. (laughs) Well, yeah. That's why they that's why they tanked it because they were like, where's our billion dollars? Yeah. Now, you can say, well, it was the it was the writers, it was the directors. It was, maybe, maybe it was all that. Maybe, and maybe if you had a writer like Christopher Nolan who took more control over all of it, the general public would care more about it, even if they've never read about it. Yeah, but that's not what we got, you know. So, appreciating things for what they are, generational defining things. Yes, Christopher Nolan's got that down, and I think he. Is going to, you know, but, you know, JL, that movie's generational defining. I mean, you don't raise millions of dollars yeah. for suicide prevention and it not be like a huge stamp yeah. of, you know, history. I mean, a stamp on history. I mean, that's, yeah. that that meant something to a lot of people. So it's, it's a tough one. Yeah. But it's like. Also, it's also harder now because like. There's just so much, like, on to the next, on the next. We're mm-hmm. so fast. Everything's so quick. And we're all yeah ready for the next thing. Next thing, please. Next thing. We're just consume, consume, consume. Where it's like, back then, you know, it would... Yeah, you'd, you'd, you'd kind of stuck with a movie for a while. Yeah. And, uh, you know, now it's just, like, every year, there's the new one. New one, new one, new one, new one. Yeah. And, um, you know, so... Which is cool for some things, but and then I feel like it it does take away a little bit. I from, just really from, can't wait for 
uh, them to stop making things for a while. Not like everything. I mean, like I want to. I want to see something that I've never heard of. Yeah. That I've never experienced. Yeah. I want a filmmaker to come up with an idea that is just one hundred percent original. Blow me away with a story. Don't copy Star Wars or Dragon Ball Z or yeah. fucking Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Just give me something new. Yeah. I just want something original. Yeah. That's all I want. There's a whole bunch of books out there. Pick one and write <laughs> and write a movie out of it. Come on. Well, that's not original. You're just writing off of a book. Oh, that's how most movies are. Well, no. I mean, like, no, I, I mean, like, something completely original. Yeah. You know? Like, just yeah. something that's just so special that, like, lives on its own. That'd be great, yeah. you know, without having to reference or be based on something. Like, yeah. can it all just go away for a while, make room, and somebody come on, come in here? I'm not saying I'm the guy to fucking do it. No. I'm not. I'm writing the zombie universe. Yeah. Like, I, I'm not the guy for the job, but no. there's got to be someone to come in here and actually come up with something original. Yeah. Like, somebody's got to come in here. And fix this problem, because well, all everybody wants is capes and magic and look, sticks. It and could <laughs> also be hard because, I mean, it's like trying to invent something completely, yeah, new nowadays. Which is like, I know. Well, we say that, but watch, something's gonna come out and be like, oh fuck, what did I think of that? Yeah. And it's gonna be original. It's gonna and it's gonna blow people away. Yeah, people are gonna be like, holy shit, it's amazing. Did you see that movie? It's yeah. gonna happen. Think about Which, it. Think about it. Get out. That's original as fuck. Yeah. It wasn't based on nothing. Yeah. That's uh, fair. Us. Original as fuck. It wasn't based on nothing. Yeah. Like, Jordan Peele can do it. And yeah. every time he comes out with a movie, it's always like, holy fuck. Yeah. You know, there there, there are cool. there are creators yeah, out he, there. He is, he is one that... Yeah. Now, I mean, he could be pulling from stuff that we don't know about, but... Well, I'm not saying you can't pull from anything, but you yeah. don't recognize anything else within that that content he made. Yeah. Nothing else is recognizable in there. I watch it and go, this is something... I've never seen this before. Yeah. I have never seen it. Yeah. It is new. Mm-hmm. So there are creators out there who yeah. are doing this. It's just... It's not getting the attention and the... um. Uh, it's not getting the attention it deserves yeah. because it's so oversaturated with capes and magic and fucking superheroes. And, and yeah. you know, as much as I love that stuff, you know, I di- I went to the, se- the theater to see Nope. And I cannot even tell you why. Yeah. It just looked... And I'm so glad I did because I, I it was love the absolutely way they, incredible. I love the way that they advertised that with all the trailers. It was terrifying. They did. Yeah. So I remember we were talking about how like trailers, oh, they all ruined the movie now. They played that up so well. Yeah. They made you think one thing and it was something completely <laughs> else. The, the trailers end. aren't the problem. It's the people editing the trailer. <laughs> That's yeah. the problem. You yeah. guys need to yeah. stop spoiling movies. <laughs> all my trailer companies, they're not listening to this podcast, but... no. Um, somebody tell them if you know trailer company people. Hey, no. stop putting the whole movie in the trailer. It's not, it's not gonna work. I can't even blame the trailer companies, can we? Though it's yeah. the studios going in there and be like, we need to get people in the seats. Um, um speaking of movie people, um, Amaya did a facial on a woman, uh, like a couple weeks ago. She's an esthetician, and um, <sighs> her son was like a big time movie producer. In Hollywood, and I was like, "Okay, so are you gonna get get me his number or oh. what?" <laughs> yeah. I don't know who it was. Um, she'll have to find. I don't even know if she can, but she'll have to find her name. Yeah, we can uh, do some digging, but uh, which I don't even know if we can do. But fuck it. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. It would be cool though to, because uh, I've always. Uh, my dad asked not too long ago, like, what does a movie producer do? And I was like, I don't know how to answer that question. And they, in, in, in the, um, the, off, just, the offer, they, they just show you what they do. It's and just it's, money. They're, no, they're literally a problem solver. On any problem, they solve. That's huh. it. 
in some way, shape, or form. That's debatable. And, and uh, that's that's pretty much it depends the, on the producer. Correct. Yeah. And uh, so so it would be kind of cool to like hear. It'd be cool if we can maybe yeah. get someone like that on here. Yeah, that'd be neat. I I I mean, how many times have we like had problems? on making some shit and uh I mean I guess I mean yeah we, we have worked with a producer it wasn't a film producer but I mean, yeah so I, yeah so I guess I guess he was a little bit of a problem solver if you look at it that way yeah and uh that's pretty much their <laughs> job cuz yeah I I never really knew mm-hmm. so it, it, it speaking that, of creating New ideas. I have so I'm so excited. Um, obviously, we have this new album coming out in March, but I'm also very excited because I have been writing a lot of really cool songs myself, and I'm just really excited because I've been working with Nico and doing stuff with him. Mm-hmm. I've been doing stuff for the band, obviously the Broken View, mm-hmm. um, and it's just really exciting to um, be creating because I really like creating. Yeah, and I really love. There's one song that just keeps sticking out to me that I freaking love. Mm. I'm just so excited about that song. I love when I write something that makes me feel, and I think that that is what it's all about. Being a creator, yeah, is not making something that you think other people are gonna like. Or when I make something and I don't feel like I need approval from anybody, that's when I know I've created something great. Yeah. When I when I don't feel like I even need to ask anybody, is this good? Do you like it? And yeah. I don't feel like I have to do that at all with any of the stuff I've been creating because I'm just listening to it. And it's not even like a thing where it's like, oh, I know this is awesome. It's more of like a, I'm so happy with this. And I and I think it's the first time I can say that in a really long time because I've been, uh, the stuff I've created in the past, I felt I've been very, you know, it's been a lot, a lot of scrutiny and I feel like it's been a lot of um, opinions and stuff and in the room and stuff. And, and I really love creating something that came from literally just sitting there and just trying. Cause a lot of it you know, is just, you know, cause I'll create an idea and be like, why isn't this fucking clicking with me? And why am I not feeling it? And then I'll do one tiny little adjustment or add one little guitar thing. And then I'm like, Oh wow. Okay. There's the song. Yeah. And that's just super exciting for me. And, um, Getting back to, I feel like I'm just getting back to my roots because I've been like, you know, faking it till I make it as a fucking filmmaker for the past two months. Yeah. And now I'm just like, yeah. uh, you know, that's cool. And I would love to do that someday. But, you know, right now, you know, on the topic of creating new things, it's very cool. And it's yeah. very refreshing because I get to, you know, I get to hear all the stuff, the stuff before everybody else. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. and, it, you know, I think about it all the time and I'm like, man. I'm so glad that I wouldn't take this and bring it to somebody and then go, hey, I'm going to put this out. This is a new album. And then have them look at me and be like, can we shorten it? And then give them the shorter version of the album first. Then we'll give them the whole album. Fuck no. (laughs) Never do that, people. Don't compromise your art ever. Don't do that. Unless it genuinely you feel makes it better. Which well, I feel duh, like in then, most then cases it wouldn't be a but, then it wouldn't be a compromise. If you yeah. think it makes it better, then there would be no compromising. Right. But no, yeah, if you're happy with something, some don't change it. Like, yeah. And yes. it, it, it's just learning a lot. I learn a lot about how to be happy as a creator watching other people create. Yeah. And that's what I feel like I have been doing a lot of just sitting back and and absorbing and thinking of like what things mean to me and my, you know, my overall opinion and outlook of how that was made or that was made. And I'm like, Oh, that's weird. And I think about it and then it makes you sit back and go, would I do that? And then you're like, no. And if it's a no, then I feel like I'm always like in a really good mindset with that. And Hmm. I'm just, uh, super excited to put these songs together for everybody. And I want to, you know, I have so much music. (laughs) I want to release two albums this year so bad. It's quite a goal. Like, like on top of this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to put two more out. Crazy. Yeah. Whether they're only with the band, I don't know. But I, I do, I do know that there's going to be this year, 
the Broken View album, and hopefully another Broken View album, and an album um, under a different name, an EP under a different name. I know that's definitely stuff that I want to accomplish this year. Big list. Yeah, because I feel like the music, you know, the, there's songs that have been sitting, and I've been thinking about this, there's songs that have been sitting on my computer for too long. And uh, it's time to uh, give them away. And I think that, because I, I, I've been going back a lot, you know, listening to them and thinking about, like, the notes and all the uh, things that we kind of learned from working down at Orb mm-hmm. and being like, you know, wow, yeah, there's nothing there's nothing to change here. You know, and going back to these songs and being like, no, that there's literally nothing to change here. And... And that's crazy because before or I was like always thinking, oh, they could be improved, they could be changed and all that stuff. And now I'm like with the the freeing idea of um, working at Orb and like, you know, listening to Matt talk to us multiple times about this. Um, the times I've second guessed myself, hmm. I should not have been doing that. And I think now I'm like, oh, it makes sense now. Yeah. You just need to be more stern about what the idea is and not changing it. Like, and the biggest learning experience for that was need a friend for me. Cause everybody around me was like, I don't know. I don't know if that's it. I don't know, man. And I'm like, no. you're all wrong. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, you know, right or wrong, you know, I just kept thinking to myself, I was like, I can't feel this way for any other reason other than I love what it is. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not like, I'm not listening to it thinking my ideas are better. You know, I just knew that no one around me had a, had an alternative idea. Yeah. And I think well, that's I a big problem when, when people say, Oh, it's not right. And then they don't have any options. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, then, then it's not wrong. You know? Well, I think the biggest thing, especially with need a friend was that we were just burned out. Yeah. Hard. Well, I know you were, cause all you were doing is beating drums for three days. But Well, I think it was just a, for everyone like i know um maybe matt not maybe matt wasn't um but um that was like the last song before we can move on and i know he wanted to move on yeah so, yeah, yeah um to new things and yeah, well, yeah I mean, nobody's at fault there um yeah, i think it the, was the way a, i look at it is this it's no one's at fault for thinking it's not ready what it was is I needed to be more stern. I yeah. needed to put my foot down and say, no, yeah. this is right. Yeah. Even if you guys don't see it, the song yeah. wasn't done. It right. was done in my head. Yeah. So the best thing to do in that situation when everyone else second guesses is to go forward with the idea that is there. Yeah. Like, there's no reason to not do it. Yeah. And it wasn't until you know, um, like we got back. And then, Mm -hmm. like, sat with it for a few days and then finally, like, figured out the bridge. And then... Yeah, and that 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 had a couple iterations. We've had those two bridges that we were kind of going back and forth. Mm -hmm. And that was another time, you know. There's so many things. Like, second guessing is... I I hate it. I hate it. I wish I could get rid of it because it's such a... It's such an annoying thing we do. Yeah. And I, you know, and I'm trying to do far less of it. Yeah. Because this video, just making the video, not second guessing ideas and just going, okay, yeah, no, no, no. There's yeah. the idea. It's great. And we filmed it, edited it, and it worked out so well. Get to do because that we again. didn't second guess. Yeah. Because we're not sitting there second guessing for months going, is it? <laughs> you know, yeah. and I think that's what I'm doing with these new songs. I'm not second guessing. I am saying, do I like it the way it sounds? Yeah. And then I go, yep. And then I go, nothing's wrong with it. And then I move on. And yeah. I think that is what needs to happen with art. Unless you want it to, you know, come out sounding a little messy. Because I think that's when, when you spend too much time on a song, it's not, it's not, you're not capturing a moment in a bottle anymore. You're, you know. Refining it. Yeah, you're refining it to something that is, you know, I don't know. There's so many words to describe yeah. this, but like it's a 
thing I want to stop doing. And, and I just, you know, I feel very positive about what I've been creating and I listened to it all again today. Cause that's all I do when I clean my house is put, put on all the new songs that I've been writing. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm always like, you know, I just feel so good listening yeah. to it. And I think that is, that's a very important thing for me to like really love what I'm making. And I really, really love mm-hmm. what's, what's coming out. And yeah. uh, especially this one song. Yeah. Yeah. I just can't, uh, what I would love to do for this next album, <laughs> I know we haven't even released it yet, this uh, our next one, mm-hmm. but the next next one, um, is literally just like live down here <laughs> for a few days and just see what happens. Doing what? <laughs> Making music. Oh, like. The old days when they just like live in the studio for days Mm -hmm. until something came out. Yeah. Just for a couple. I think that would be pretty funny. For a couple. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing though. That's, you know, that's a cool idea, but it wasn't exactly like those were the only one that really was created from scratch was who we are. Everything else. And... All I feel is you. So it's not it's not a thing that it's a very isolated concept and yeah. it doesn't work out a lot. It, well, I know, but just but most of the ideas it. were like demos I've had since I was like 11. Yeah. And you know, and but ideas and lyrics fun. that I've been toying around with since I was like 11. So it's yeah. crazy that yeah. Um it's crazy the way things work, but yeah. And um, even having like the other guys too. Yeah. That'd be cool. It's it's I'd crazy. Like to do it. Because we, mm. we've never, like, we always talk about, like, oh, you know, less cooks in the kitchen. But yeah. we've never actually really tried to, like, yeah, that's do true. it with these No, of guys. I'm with you. And I said that, like, a couple of practices ago. I was like, why don't we just write a song one day? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I mean, I can't help and you can't that. For, you can't force no, it. No, you it can't. It has to just be, like, well, one of those things where you're like, yeah. hey. That's true. It has to be very organic. That's why I was like. Well, why don't we just like live down here for a little bit? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the way to do it. I just yeah. like my mad scientist approach usually. Yeah. To where I am literally doing nothing, and then in a split second, I'm like, oh, yeah, I gotta get down there. I gotta yeah. get to a bass. I yeah. need to get to a drum. I need yeah. to get to you know. Yeah. I need my phone. I need to sing. Yeah. Into the phone, you know. I love when that happens. Those yeah. are always the best songs. Yeah. Or sometimes I have no idea, yeah. and I go writing, writing, and then I go down and I write, yeah. and that's when I love doing it the most. Uh, yeah, but I do also like the more like stressful concepts too, because it is for me stressful to sit down and be like let's write a song it's very stressful oh, yeah. but it's cool when you do get something that sounds good yeah it, it when it works you're like thank god but you're yeah. like holy shit that was a lot of hours of doing nothing you know and and that yeah. that's the that's the trade off it's like okay and i wonder if all writers are like that i'm curious to know how quickly certain writers can just come up with something and you know but i think I, we're just picky so we're like well, I mean, I feel like there's a lot of writers out there that just know what works. Yeah. And they But you don't always want to just do what works though. You know? Well, a lot of them. I don't. <laughs> I mean, if we're talking I, I don't. If, if we're talking like a, a like, song needs to, like like A class yeah. writers that are writing pop music all day yeah. like in Nashville and shit. Well, like, yeah, that's that's a whole that, another world. They're just like, "Oh yeah, these chords will work with this uh-huh. <laughs> this tempo and then yeah. you figure out a melody and boom." And then you something just needs add to jump out at me. It needs to grab me and strangle me. That's yeah. why I need to hear something that like wants to live in my head for yeah. days. And I and I and uh and I find what's that. something that like draws me in specifically is the way something sounds the way it sounds the way like the like actual the tone, tonal quality, tonal quality of it that will make me feel a certain way yeah like that's why i don't thing, like 
recording the, albums. That's why I like demos so much better because right. then the tonal quality shifts and then it's something that I don't recognize. Right. The you biggest know? thing I remember specifically, the best example I can give is our song Nothing to You. The way things sounded in your demo was yeah. perfect. Well, that's don't how I feel it. about a lot of the new like, ones. I was like, don't touch it. And I think I literally just bounced all the pads you had. You did. And then they're bounced. And I just put it in Yeah, you did. And that was it. And I was like... I think I said that to Sarah the other day. I was like, my band's going to hate me when we get to the uh, tracking process for these new songs. Because I'm I'm incredibly devoted to a way a lot of it sounds. And uh, it's going to be tough to hear it in a different way. Well, that's also why I'm like, I want to experiment just trying something new mm. like writing something new not necessarily taking what you already have mm. because you are you've got bad demo <laughs> well i mean i guess but like but we can't just like you know i can't uh <laughs> there would be no songs on the album if we did that but that's why i'm saying you know let's like purposely go in to write a new album. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know if I can jive with you on that. Uh, I would be down to write a song. I don't think I would want to go in and... Well, because I don't... I, I I mean, that's just not the way I work. You know? Everybody's got their flow, man. Yeah, I know. And, but you uh, don't, but- I just know what would come out of me. It wouldn't be as good if I were... You know what you, you think? You, it's you, get like, a bu- cause, you get a bug to write. I mean, that's how I do. I get yeah. a bug, and I'm like, it's bug time, and and I have a writing bug, and then I'm consumed by that song until I am happy with the product. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't really like sitting around, you know, being like, all right, one song down, let's do another. You know, it's just that it, it doesn't always doesn't really vibe with me. Um, it, it you know. I don't know. There's just something odd about that. My my head just uh, hears the idea and thinks about the concept, and then I'm like a little turned off by it because I like the way I write. You know, I like the way I work. But hmm. it's the same thing with Nico. You know, like a lot of it is just him letting me do what I do, mm-hmm. and then he takes my mumble. And you know, he'll throw suggestions like, "Hey, maybe do the guitar like this. Maybe do guitar like this, or maybe do this." And the structuring, it's, you know, I kind of do that. And then I pretty much do my thing. Mm-hmm. And then I mumble over the track in a melody. And then he writes the lyrics. Mm-hmm. When him and I work together, that's the way it's done. Well, push hey. yourself outside of that. Yeah, I guess. We can try it, but I mean. It makes you uncomfortable. That's why I feel like it should, you should do it. Oh, I don't know. It's certainly. I like when you're not comfortable all the time. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Some of the best stuff comes out that way. Yeah. Once again, I would say. I mean, look at how we look at the video that we just uh, made. I mean, Perfect I would example. say debatable, you know. But I mean, I because like you say, you know, but I, I you don't know because you've never done it. So it seems like it's just like almost an excuse that you're making. Not no, like, I wouldn't not, be an excuse per, because, like I said, not earlier, like in a bad way. I'm just saying, I like am, maybe mentally, you're well, just like. If I'm really happy with the stuff I'm making. And the stuff that I'm doing now, and I feel no need to change the way I do it, mm. you know, then you, well, should, you shouldn't those, change. Well, I'm not saying those change songs. the way you do it if you're happy with the way you're doing it. Right. Well, know? I'm not saying any of those songs like can't be used. But what I'm saying is why be like, oh, these are the songs. Mm-hmm. Let's well, let's just go like I hey, think, let's make an album. I think it'd be really cool to do that in a separate project. Well, that's what I'm you saying. Know? Like um, the collection of songs that I have been growing. You know, whether you know you helped me or John helped me or Taylor helped me or Joe helped me or Nico helped me. Mm-hmm. The collection of songs that I have that are like contenders. Mm-hmm. That should be like a separate thing. And well, then, that's what I'm saying. You know, I'm, not, I'm not saying like they'll feel uneven, and well, I know they would. Well, what you I'm know. saying is, like, rather than just being like, oh, this is going to be an album, and and that it be yeah. it. Yeah. Why not just try to, like, do the uncomfortable thing and then see what happens? Well, that's why I said we should, like, 
um, try doing I'd, some songwriting in the practice space. Yeah. yeah. I've said that a few times. And like, I know because like that definitely makes me uncomfortable because the way we write in the yeah. past has always been on the computer mm-hmm. and um, finding like, at least for me, like this, this sound of something that inspires the next thing. But like, yeah, I'm not opposed to that either. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's just uh it's a tough thing, you know? Um, because the older any, anyone gets, I mean, you mm. start to feel, you know, you feel your, um, the way you do things is always changing, you know. Mm-hmm. And I've, I, you know, I've gotten to uh, work in many different ways with many different people and many different forms and mm. different restraints and all that stuff. And I, you know, uh, I know from hearing myself you know because i hear myself sing Mm -hmm. i can feel when i am being very honest about something Mm -hmm. and i know when it's coming out in a forced way and i do know also that every time i have written in a group setting i always think it's a little forced and i can always feel that in the songs and i it's always there even if people don't feel it I do. And I'm always like, yeah, that's definitely something that that came from a group. And I can always yeah. I can always pick it out of that. Yeah. Well then you know, and, and I love the stuff when I'm like and which is not a problem at all, because I love the stuff that sounds yeah. like it comes from a group. But it's it, I always prefer the ones that well, then are again, a little less don't um, compromise. The, that are a little more right like, off the get go. Be like, this seems forced. Call it out. Yeah. Yeah, we can definitely give that a try. Um, I think we should. Yeah, we could try. It makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> we could try. Yeah. And, but like, finding comfort in the uncomfortable is... Yeah, that's kinda, part of it. That, that, that pushes new things forward. Yeah. Like, yeah. And I'm not like discrediting what you've already done. I'm not no, no. But I, I think I'm just having this... I'm kind of thinking out loud at the moment of like mm-hmm. it would be cool to like. No, we should totally try that. I've suggested like, it. I, you and I are the only ones who have. I mean, like, yeah. I've, I've suggested it. I love throwing that in the mix. It just never happens because I always go, "Let's try it," and then everyone goes, "Yeah," and then we don't, and then I'm like, yeah. "All right, I guess I'll just keep writing on my own then." <laughs> yeah. And and that's what I do, and and that's fine because I right. love to write by myself. I love yeah. you know, to get a little in my thoughts, and sometimes you know. Yeah. Pour some wine and just chill and then get in my thoughts in my head and I'm, I'm cooking and I cook yeah. some stuff, dude. I, I cook. Yeah. I cook. I mm-hmm. know I can cook. But I would like to figure out it what it would sound like if we wrote, you know, more as a group. Because yeah. I'm curious. I am very curious. Cause Yeah, because like we And I think Pro Tools really is the problem, do. by the way. Maybe we can't I don't think we can do it with Pro Tools. Yeah. I really don't. Maybe. I think that the best way to do it, if we're gonna try it, is like a rock band. See, I, to just try even that, dude. Like, I don't even know. Like, whatever happens, happens. And like, no rules. No, like, oh, no Pro Tools and Pro Tools. Mm-hmm. No. Just like, well, what, what I'm would saying happen is like, if we exactly? I feel like what we need to do, maybe, maybe I am setting a rule here. Maybe we just need to like sit here for a bit. And just hang out, mm. and just have some 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 wine, and uh, have yeah. conversations like these. And my then lo- maybe my loner brain is like, huh? <laughs> oh, I can just hang out, you know? Because like I love just, hanging out. Even just but it's, have it's difficult to think hanging out equals. Well, it doesn't need. <laughs> art. But that's what I'm. Well, that's yeah. what I'm saying. It doesn't yeah. necessarily. Us just hanging. I think that's it. We just need to hang out more yeah. as like. And it will just happen. Just yeah. like how you're like, oh, I don't really like go into something being like, oh, I'm going to write. You just kind of boop. Yeah. And it yeah. happens, you know? And like, I get that too. Like it, it it's not as often as you, um, but like, I'll just have moments where I'm like, like the other night I, uh, I was really interested. I was like watching a bunch of like 
videos on game design mm-hmm. and i was like i really want to make like a ray gun sound for yeah. some reason and so i was like okay i'm gonna go do it and it was like 12 12 30 at night <laughs> and i'm sitting there like dropping stuff on my desk to like get a bunch of different sounds and like recording it and like clapping and stomping and mm-hmm. maya comes and she's like what are you doing I'm like i'm making a ray gun sound go away <laughs> and so i stayed up till about three uh, making this crazy uh, sound. I'll have to show it to you. It actually sounds really cool. Um, but it's literally just like pens dropping, mm-hmm. nails dropping, and I just changed it into this. The new <laughs> album is just ray gun sounds. Yeah. So, like, I, it's, I, there's like, I, so I get what you're saying of like where you just have like these moments of like, oh, I need to do this. I'm going to go mm-hmm. do this. And you just start doing shit. And so, like, I get it a lot at night yeah. specifically. It's like, yeah. My my, mm-hmm. I just feel like creating at night, um, whatever it may be. But but yeah, just letting like, you know, we got like five minutes. Five minutes before, yeah. yeah, we can we can start wrapping this up. But but no, I agree. Let's we can definitely give it a try, and we should talk about it tonight. On, on yeah, podcast. we totally and, could and see. See, it what, would be it happens. would be an interesting experience, and if we make a bunch of songs that we're like these suck, you know, so be it. I'm not gonna be surprised, but I'm also not gonna be disappointed you know yeah what i will be disappointed is if it doesn't happen and we should we should just do it i agree we should give it a try it might suck give it a try and i like your idea of just hanging out first and seeing where that goes yeah Yeah, rather than being like hey guys come over and let's make a song yeah let's no i hear you let's just hang out here because this this area yeah because i would like yeah i know i can talk all day about being excited about my songs that i'm writing and you know i know we all find enjoyment in it in our own way when we do uh put them together and put them on the album and perform on them but i guess that is different than all of us creating them together i get that and i Um, feel like you know it is it is just what it is sometimes that is just the way things work you know what i'm saying and i'm not disagreeing with that at all yeah i'm merely saying because we hey, have a formula that hasn't failed us so far, but yeah. I do like the idea of shaking things up. Yeah. I'm cool with we, that. It keeps things interesting. Yeah. And maybe we'll make something boundaries. really crazy. And if that happens, I'll fucking I'll shit myself. Yeah. But, uh, and you I'll, get to I'll, say I told you so. I'll be surprised. I, I will genuinely genuinely be surprised. Because mm-hmm. yes, most of what we have done in the past has been stemmed from you just being in your cave i do i do like my cave yeah but i don't know i just have this urge to like no i'm with you that you just yeah (laughs) you're just bored and you want to try something new i get you me too yeah i think we can give it a try i think it'll be cool we'll let you guys know how it goes (laughs) Yeah, uh, <laughs> you'll, we'll, you'll hear it first on the, the oh, if, yeah. it, if it happens. Oh, do not, I get but. to say it this time? Go to thebrokenview.com and use TVV podcast for 10% off of your order. Yes. Oh, my God. I got yeah. to say it. There it is. And then, uh, yeah, new album coming out in March. 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 March 1st. Are we announcing it? Yeah. March there you 1st. go, guys. March All 1st. Right. Yeah. <laughs> March 1st. Oh, yeah. Ordinary Love. We got a music video to make this month, so. Yes. Yeah, we actually got to go get to practice right now. Yeah. All right, y'all. Um, well, this was a fun one. This was a fun this one. This is a fun one. Okay. Nice, Chad. All right. Bye, guys. See ya.